What's up guys? Today we're going to be looking at a bait underwater that the second I saw it on Tackle Warehouse, I was like, holy crap, what is that thing? That thing looks so freaky, but so cool at the same time. Everything is like, uh, oh, okay, I got to order some of those. And they're a little bit expensive for a soft plastic. It's the G-Crack Bellows Gill. I'm sure you've seen it on there. If you've spent any time at all in Tackle Warehouse, you've looked at them things and just been like, uh... I don't know if I want to order that thing. It's like eight bucks for five of them. But man, we're going to do a little bit of a review, kind of tell you what my thoughts are on them, kind of look at them underneath the water in the little test tank deal and see if it's worth it. All right, let's open this pack up, kind of see what we're thinking. So they do come in a bag and then it looks like clamshell packaging and holy crap they are slimy like so, like and they smell really bad too holy crap it smells like it, it smells bad um like, i don't even know what how to explain that kind of like if you've ever had like a cat pee on your clothes or something like that it, it it's bad it's so, somewhere between cat urine and some sort of fish smell but holy crap are they greasy they're they're definitely interesting i mean they got some interesting wiggle to them there's the body is fairly thick but like these ribs go out close to a three quarter or a half inch on each side and this is the 3.8 size so yeah as you can see my hands are just getting all sorts of greasy and they smell like I can't even, I'm not even going to explain it on this video. It's just bad. Um, it takes that Kytex stench to a whole new level. But overall, like, I mean, it looks like the rigidity is pretty, pretty good on it. Seems like there's a lot of movement there. Um, yeah, that's just kind of the initial thought. The 3.8s come five to a pack. And like I said, they come in this little clamshell packaging. Um, they got a little cover that kind of goes over the top of them. I guess... I don't even know what color this is. It's like muddy gill or something like that. The, the writing's in Chinese, so I have no clue about color-wise. But this one, I, like I said, I think it was muddy gill. It's kind of got like a beige-ish beige bottom. And the top is kind of more like a green pumpkin, but it's got some blue and purple flake in the top of it. Looks like some black flake in there too. It's definitely more of a lam lam laminate, say it boy, um, laminate style bait. But as you can see, it's just kind of, I mean, it's its an interesting bait. Like, you can see it just sitting in my hand, and that tail's just got a ton of little wiggle to it. But those ribs go all the way down the, the bait. And like I said, they're pretty wide. And I mean, the width of the actual body itself is a little narrower than my finger. But, I mean, it's its pretty good, pretty good thickness. Um, it's about a half inch wide thickness there but just to kind of get you an idea of what this thing looks like from a bunch of different angles okay as far as rigging this thing i've done a bunch of kind of research on it and it seems like there's three main ways that guys use it um one is on a shaky head two is on a texas rig and three is on a weighted swim bait hook all right we're going to weight this thing on the weighted swim bait hook I've got a little bit of line tied on there, and that's for the tank purposes. But we screw lock with some weight, and I think it's like a five, it's a five aught trocar uh, swim bait hook. And I just took a little bit of lead tape and put it around the front of that hook because I, I didn't have any five aught weighted hooks on me for whatever reason. Um, so just gonna kind of put it in there, put the screw lock in there. Holy cow! It's so slick that it just, I mean, yeah. Just so oily and man these things smell super bad i'm really disappointed in myself for doing this in the house because it stinks okay a little further wait it or do the beige side down here gotta see where that comes out at too far back come 
through. Okay. Sucker cam. There we go. It's looking better there. So there we go. Like I said on the weighted swim bait hook, let's throw this in the tank and see what it looks like. All right, we're here. Let's throw this G Crack Bellows Gill 3.8 in the tank and see what she looks like. You can just see how every little movement, like every time it hits the bottom, the whole thing just vibrates. You just see the oils coming off of it too. You're just sitting on the bottom, that tail just kind of sits there and just, just nice and easy. But overall, I'm sure this bait just glides beautifully in the water. It just kind of spirals down like a freaking dead bluegill but overall i get it to kind of go down right obviously we don't have enough room for it to correct itself in here you can just see how much wiggle that tail has in it that's just tantalizing i'm almost thinking you dye that tip a little bit chartreuse Ooh, that thing be beautiful but I like how thick this bait is. Like, when imitating a bluegill, you hardly ever get a bait that, that that's that thick. And, yeah, I think it's just going to imitate a really good bluegill profile. I'll have to take this out this weekend and throw it around the power plant lake and see if we can't catch a big one on it. All right, guys, that's kind of my initial... This was kind of my initial review of the G-Crack Bellows Gill, the 3.8 size, in Muddy Water Bluegill. First impressions, man, this thing is just, it's a different profile from a lot of different baits. And one thing, kind of comparing it in size, this is a full-size Missile Baits D-Bomb. So you can see, I mean, it's about the same length. It's a little bit shorter, but look how wide that thing is compared to the D-Bomb. Like, it, it's almost looking like it's close to double the width of the D-Bomb. Thickness, get that line out of the way. Thickness, it's it's a little thicker. Um, but yeah, overall, those ribs are just, the ribs are thicker themselves. But you can just kind of see, like, just the overall width of it. So I think when imitating that bluegill, we're kind of venturing into, like, a lane that we really haven't ventured into much with in bass fishing in uh, soft plastics with those really wide, big bluegill imitators. So I think this is one to kind of really, really look into and really test out on the water and see how it goes. I'm gonna go out this weekend and throw out a throw it out a lake and kind of see how see how it goes. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my initial thoughts on it. I think it's got a lot of potential. I mean, it could suck. Who knows? I could not catch a freaking fish on it. It could be the worst bait in the world. But kind of looking at it, it's got me intrigued, and I definitely want to try throwing it. Um, like I said, it's got the stinkiness to it, um, as if, if that's important to you. Um, it's got that good width. It's got a good little vibration and subtle movement on the bottom. So, I mean, it, it seems like a Japanese bait. It's got a lot of finesse to it. It's very... It's very unique and different. So if you're looking to try something very unique and different that really imitates a bluegill even better than like what a traditional beaver style would, then definitely check these out and give them a try. I know I will. Thanks guys, see ya.